Hey everyone, it's Brian Bogner along with Greg Towner and it is time for the 20 minute market breakdown here for the month of April. And we do have a lot to talk about today simply because uh, the market is decide to take a little bit of a bumpy chop. And uh, you know, we've market's been ribbing and roaring, it's been moving higher. Everybody's been kind of participating right in this big upswing. And then now all of a sudden things, right? What happens, things get, little extended the upside and we're getting some volatility and some downward movement and of course with volatility right emotions start start elevating and people start getting worried and things like that so that's what we're going to talk about today so greg how are you doing doing great brian thanks happy to be here awesome well let's go ahead and dive into this um what greg is causing all of this market volatility what can we look to that is making uh making the market uh take a pause here. Yeah, I mean, that's always the question. And, you know, the newspapers and the media, they always love to pinpoint it. Even, even just one day, they're like, oh, market did this because of this. And, you know, we know it's it's hard to keep things in isolation. There's always so many moving factors going on. I mean, you mentioned just one of them, the market had gone up so far so fast that, you know, right. the sentiment had been starting to work against us. It was a favorable back in the lows in October. The sentiment had gotten pretty stretched. So it was, the market was kind of, you know, susceptible to any issues. Mm -hmm. And really, I mean, we, we've said this in the past, that occasionally the market needs to give investors a reminder that it doesn't only go up, right? I mean, the, right. the, the rally right. off the October lows was relentless. Right. And it just kind of seemed like there was no down days practically. So we need a reminder once in a while. Right. But that, that haven't been said, there was unquestionably, you know, a couple of reasons for, for sure that that caused the market volatility. The biggest one, without a doubt, was the last inflation data point, the CPI that came out. Uh, it was a little bit higher than expected. I mean, not much. You actually had to go out to a couple of decimal points in places to see the difference, mm -hmm. but doesn't matter. The market thought it was you know, hotter than than they wanted. So that that hurt stocks and it, it, it really you know caused rates to inflect higher. We'll get into that more in a minute, but that was by far the biggest factor because it really the market just views that the Fed is, you know, not cutting as much or cutting later or you know, all of that. So that was a negative. And then, you know, if we wanted to point another issue that the market is trying to get its hands on right now, it's unquestionably the, the volatility or excuse me, the conflict in the Middle East. Right. You know, obviously what's been going on with Israel, but now Iran has started to get involved. And that is a potential issue because of around, you know, how much oil Iran supplies to the market. And it hasn't become an actual fundamental issue yet as far right. as supply demand, but there's the risk there. And if, you know, historically Middle East conflicts have caused oil to spike a lot and oil spiking a lot historically has caused recession. So we're not anywhere near that yet, but it's a risk that the market is having to factor in. You know, I think the important thing to remember is that, you know, there's headlines that will come out and say, market is down because of this. So the market is down because of that. But the reality is, and for those of you listening, is that there typically are many, 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 many reasons why the market is doing what it's doing. And nine times out of 10, it's not what the headline is and it's not what's being reported. So, yeah. you know, just be careful when you're reading something. And, you know, again, news uh, journalists get paid to write content. And they're going to write whatever they want to write. It doesn't necessarily mean that that is exactly what is taking place. So, um, so there are a lot of reasons why the market is down. But you know, I think it is also important to know when we talk about the market what what is exactly down, right? Because we talk a lot about the S and P five hundred, and even when this volatility, it's only down about what five percent, I believe. And so, what are the impacts, Greg, in the market right now that you're seeing? Um, you know, in this, uh, in, during this volatile time. Yeah, you're right. S&P, if you look at the broader markets, only pulled back about 5% or so from its highs, and it's really not much. I mean, we commonly have several of those in any given year. Right. But as you, yeah, as you dig under the surface, of course, there's always areas that are more impacted. You know, small cap stocks are down 8 to 9%. You know, real estate, the REITs area is down 12% or more because of the jump in rates. But there's also been some other areas that have done well. Gold, you know, uh, is up like 20 percent off the off the lows from a few months back. Uh, the dollar has been strong, which isn't always necessarily a, a positive, believe it or not. But it, you know, it has been strong. Uh, but the biggest move by far is, and, and most relevant move, I should say, has been interest rates. You know, as the as the inflation number stayed a little hot, it seemed like okay, the economy is you know pretty healthy. The Fed is probably not going to be cutting rates. 
the 10 year yield moved off a, a low from a couple months back of 3.8% up to like 4.6, 4.7. So, uh, you know, our view is it's not so much that level is, is a real big negative. You know, the market, I think, can deal with rates up, you know, to 5% or so. It's just kind of the speed and the market having to adjust to that. And mm-hmm. there's no question those higher rates have been a negative on some of the, the dividend paying areas, mm-hmm. you know, whether it's the REITs or utilities or, you know, even some of the higher quality areas that pay dividends. Um, you know, small caps have gotten hit. Um, but we think some of the areas that, you know, benefited or at least on a relative basis are those that are higher quality that don't either have a lot of debt or short term debt or, you know, that. So uh, the interest rates has really been at the end of the day of the story here in the recent weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, one of, one of the things that, you know, can be asked here, too. Right. Like, OK, you know, market was at all time highs. It got really extended up there. Everybody, you know, the FOMO, the fear of missing out. You got a lot of people getting in. Well, then it begs the question, right? Is this just a correction or is this the end of this bull market? What What are your thoughts there? Yeah, of course, we always only know in hindsight, but you know, we look at this in a lot of different ways. First of all, you, you're really better off just assuming over the longer term, markets are going to go up and that pullbacks are normal and are corrections. I mean, yes, bear markets and even really bad bar- bear markets occur, but they're very rare over time. And so more often than not, it's going to be a correction for the longer term trend. And we do think that we are still in a secular bull market uptrend. And within that, you're going to have corrections and even the occasional little bear market like we had just a couple of years ago. So, I mean, for us, there's obviously a long list of things that we could look at, but let's start with them in this order. Uh, The economy continues to be healthy. I mean, if Mm. if the economy was looking weak, the Fed would probably be looking to cut even despite some of the inflation numbers because they know that, you know, that, that, that's right. something they can get kind of get behind the curve on. The retail sales numbers are coming in strong. GDP numbers are strong. The job market continues to be very healthy. Mm-hmm. I know some people are, are kind of a negative on the economy because they, they think about the prices they paid, you know, four or five years ago compared to today. But I mean, that's almost a different conversation in the sense that, you know, when the job markets are strong and people are spending uh, economic growth, solid you know another area that we look at is what is the kind of health of mergers and acquisition area m a and ipos that, is, that those markets had pretty much frozen up over the last couple of years nobody was buying any other companies there was no new companies coming to market uh, we're starting to see more of that now we've seen a few ipos there's some more mergers and acquisitions happening that tends to be a positive catalyst for the market as a whole and particularly certain areas of the market as well. You know, Brian, we talked back late last year into early this year, there was a lot of, you know, what we call momentum signals Mm -hmm. and then the technical side of things. And there was so many of them that it was really positive as you look out 12 months later. Mm -hmm. I just saw a study from Truist Investment that, uh, had another one of those. It, it showed that, so in the first quarter this year, Brandon, the S&P finished up greater than 10%. And so if you look back over time, that's happened 11 other times with 10% or more in the first quarter. 10 out of those 11 times, the market was positive there after in the second quarter through the fourth quarter. So almost perfect. Now the one negative was a, was a glaring negative. It was a crash of 87. So we can't ignore that. Right. But all the other times, not only was the market positive, but with a much higher than average return. So, mm-hmm. I mean, we, you know, one of our favorite analysts says, don't fear strength. You know, we, we always, you know, we're on the positive side of momentum and strength. And so some of those signals we've seen over recent months, we think are positive looking out more. Yeah, you know, some of the other things, uh, earnings are healthy. I mean, we're just mm-hmm. now starting this quarter's earnings period. Right, right. But so far they're coming in pretty strong and the first quarter was pretty strong. I mean, they're, they're not growing gangbusters. I mean, I'm not trying to say that things are just ripping on the earnings front, but they're, they're healthy. They're healthy enough. Uh, I know something. You, yeah, well, oh, I'm sorry. I, uh, one thing that just got me thinking about, talk to me a little bit about, cause I know, I mean, I know like even, even at our firm here, you know, I mean, right. We've got these money markets earning 5%, five and a half percent and things like that. And I mean, I even know, you know, with a lot of our clients and a lot of folks right now, and I'm going to assume with a lot of companies, there's a lot of cash sitting there just earning 5%, which is great. It's, it's a great place to be, but right. But that's cash. That's not getting invested. It's not, it's not actually getting into the market right now. Is that, is that fair to say? 
Yeah, we've we've certainly had a big role reversal in the interest rate world over the last few years and who benefited and who's impacted, right? So, I mean, for a while there, rates were so low, you could get mortgages at 3%. It was practically free money, whereas all the retirees were like, I can't get any you know interest on my on my cash. Now it's the exact opposite. The retirees or, and or people that you know want or need to hold a lot of cash are getting really attractive returns on that. But the, 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 the primarily younger folks that are looking to buy homes, first time homes, they're like, oh, my gosh, look at these mortgage rates. So unfortunately, it's, it's a hard to find that middle ground where everybody's happy. But you're right. There's there's a tremendous amount of cash on the sidelines that yeah. could potentially be deployed at some point. You know, whether that's, you know, people start to feel better about the market or maybe the rates right. come down enough where they don't feel like they're getting enough. But the way we look at it is not only is that future money that can be put to work. But on the defensive side, you know, we're, we're often then talking about risk management. There's different ways to think about risk management. To me, this all this cash on the sidelines, you could almost look as risk management from a, the potential impact of a recession. Mm -hmm. So when and if the economy, you know, eventually falters again, mm -hmm. there's so much cash not only on the personal balance sheets to help withstand some of the negatives, by and large, obviously not everybody, but also from the corporations. I mean, the, you know, yes, it skews more towards the large mega, mega cap companies. But the amount of cash, and, and I was just before this looking at some charts that showed how healthy the balance sheets are on average for U.S. corporations, I think we're well positioned to withstand whenever the next economic downturn comes so that it's just more of a you know normal, so to speak, you know, recessionary period, whenever that is, as opposed to something really bad and sinister. And one of the other things that we look at, you know, as we look out and think that we're still in a bull market and, you know, why this, you know, maybe it's just a little temporary correction going on right now. Obviously, we're in a presidential year and, and something we don't talk too much about is seasonality, Ryan. You know, we, we, we do mm -hmm. think it has some relevance and it is interesting to look at, but you know, it's down quite a ways on the list of importance for us. Yeah. But it is noteworthy that in presidential years, election years, there tends to be some volatility and some corrections right in this period that we're in right now. Right. So it actually has lived up to its history of a pullback you know, kind of in this April into May period, sometimes there's a pullback. Right. But then the rest of the year, the markets tend to be pretty good. Maybe, you know, a little volatility late summer. But people don't realize, you know, they get all worried about the volatility of the election. But historically, the market has gone up. Like right. in every year, on average, the market's gone up. And so to us, we would look at any opportunity or excuse me, any correction, whether it be now or later in the year as an opportunity rather than something to be worried about. So the market's not waiting to see who becomes president before <laughs> before going in whatever direction it, it's going to end up in? Not only that, but if, if history is any guide, particularly in these last few, the market tends to factor in a lot of that beforehand. The market exactly. sniffs out things long before, exactly. you know, the media or yep. investors or, you know, so forth. So yep. it, it will probably know beforehand. Yep. And probably won't care for the most part. It will just maybe certain subsectors might you know be impacted one way or another depending on who the market thinks will win. But the broader, very little need there to know. Okay. Obviously, things aren't all rosy. I mean, we talked off the off the top about one of the impacts to this or causes for this correction has been the inflation. And there's no question that's been kind of you know with the last you know for a while there, Brian, we thought inflation was definitely coming down, and it did. In our recent calls, we've gotten a little more balance there. It was a little trickier to call. Like mm -hmm. It showed that maybe there were some things that could cause it to come down still some more. We have some worries around you know, the commodity mm -hmm. impacts as we look mm -hmm. out. So I think there's no question inflation is, is continues to be the risk. If it picks up here, the Fed is you know, likely not to cut. And that's a, it's a real negative, at least in the shorter term. Right. But but again, I still think this is all part of this bigger process that we keep talking about of like the normalization of things, right? Like yes, like 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 what's going on today is is we're normalizing for, because the last fifteen years was not normal, right? Things were artificially held at levels that were not normal: low, super low rates, super low inflation, yeah. things like that. So things are are allowing to be normalized, but it just takes a while for us to get there, right? So there's little spikes here and little things there, and 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 that but but we are getting back to a normal type environment on the interest rate side so i think that that's um i think that's a good thing here in the long run obviously yeah. as we get through it it's a little bit of volatility here that we're going through so yeah. well good stuff 
Good stuff, Greg. Um, always giving us some great perspective on on things here. As always, if you have any questions, you know where to call and reach us. We always like to we always like to close these uh, podcasts out with just some closing recommendations. Uh, Greg, what what do you have for us uh, this week this month? Yeah, a couple things, Brian. Um, first, I don't know if you've ever uh, heard this podcast. I, I listen to a lot of podcasts. It's become one of my favorite. Uh, the writer Derek Thompson has a podcast called Plain English. And it's really interesting. Yeah, he, he, what he does is he takes a, a, a look at a lot of the hot topics going on, whether it's you know, a lot of them are kind of economic, business, technology, medicine related, you know, that sort of thing. And he'll look at them, have a professional, other professional guests on to talk about them. Kind of looks at them from all different angles, but as, as the title explains, plain English, he kind of really brings it back to understandable, nice. yeah. uh, looking at some areas that maybe we wouldn't think about. So I really like that. And I would suggest that for okay. our listeners. But on the investment side, I mean, of course, we talked about investments here today. We talk about them a lot. I mean, our whole careers, Brian, we've loved talking, investing and doing investing. It's, it's an easy thing for people to want to look at their accounts and look at how they did or, or what mm-hmm. have you. We also know with that comes the emotional side of it. And we think right. investors would be better suited to focus a little bit less on the day-to-day and month-to-month of the market and of their account and spend a lot more time on the, on the financial planning aspects, right. you know, the right. saving, the budgeting, the tax planning, all that stuff that I know you we talk to clients about every day and mm-hmm. we have a team that does mm-hmm. that. So, so very, very important. Right. Not as exciting, but can be at least as impactful as the investment side and probably more yeah. in a lot of cases. Yeah. No, that's good. That's good stuff. Yeah. I mean, because that at the end of the day, that's the stuff that really, really matters. And it's going to yeah. impact your life. Um, all right. I got two things. First off, we are an election year. Um, we've, we've talked a little bit about AI on this sh- uh, show. I My recommendation, it's not really like a recommendation. It, it is kind of sort of a recommendation, but is just to say, please be careful what you're watching on social media and things, because you know we they, the technology is there with AI to completely recreate things. Like, like you can create a picture of or a video of somebody saying something, and it's not really them, and they never really said that, and it looks so dang real. And yeah. this is happening. These deep fakes are happening more and more and more. And so as the level of things are going to continue to rise here. I mean, we're only in April, right? We're still seven months out from uh, from the election day, but things are going to rise up. Please just be careful of what you're watching and consider the source and make sure that, you know, you're getting things from a, a reputable place because there's going to be a lot of noise. Uh, I think we've barely even scratched the surface yet. And on the investment side, kind of along those lines, we, uh, you know, as we were talking about the volatility here in the market and things like that, we've been saying this a lot that the next 10 years are not going to look like the last 10 years. And so what's worked really, really well for the last 10 years is likely not going to work really, really, really well for the next 10 years because because things are changing. Right. We were normalizing. Interest rates are back. We've got this thing called inflation that we really haven't talked about for almost 30 years. We're talking about it every day now. Um, things are different. So, um, so just know that just because something worked doesn't mean it's going to work. And, um, and as always, we thank you so much for uh, listening and uh, call us with any questions or concerns. We're always here to help you. And thanks for your time today.